try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The new story of the hour. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show map today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the war. The government. Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here and welcome back to Coffee and Crypto Live. This is your week daily morning show where we bring you the latest in everything Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I do hope all of you had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Easter. Praise the Lord that he is risen. Thank you to everybody who... Um, was here on Thursday on our final stream of last week and is here today. Guys, we've got a lot to talk about. There is a chart formation showing up on Bitcoin. Aki, right now it is here that shows me that we are about to go into a major, major rally. I am really very excited to bring you today's stream for a lot of different reasons, but the biggest among them is because this coming rally has the opportunity to print hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars for those of you who have followed the investment principles that we have taught over the course of the last several months leading into this bull market. If you have chosen the financial sovereignty way, if you have slashed your expenses to the point where you're in a profit, if you've got a budget, if you are attacking debt, if you are investing for retirement, if you are investing in cryptocurrency, putting away in a Roth IRA, if you are investing in multiple different cryptocurrencies that are going to perform very, very well, if you're thinking about investment from the lens of risk to reward, if you're having a written plan, if you are being generous, if you you are living financially sovereign, you, my friend, are in an incredible position to profit greatly this coming bull market. Friends, we are about three weeks away from the next halving event on Bitcoin. Bitcoin's block reward will be dropping from 6.25 to 3.125 Bitcoin per block, which happens every 10 minutes. That will decrease the inflationary rate of Bitcoin by 50% and likely send Bitcoin and the altcoins through the flipping moon. So far, Bitcoin has been trading right above the last bull market's all-time high at around $69,000. This morning, we took a bit of a dive, but as we have done several times over the last seven days, Bitcoin has managed to hold right there fast on that critical level of support. Today, we're going to be talking about why that chart shows me as an analyst that a major rally on Bitcoin and its fellow altcoins is coming soon, and I want you guys to be prepared for that. So welcome to the stream. And thank you so very much for everyone who has tuned in. I also, even before we get started, have a very special announcement. And unfortunately, we're putting all the finishing touches on everything. But I wanted to start, to start it today. So I don't have the logo and everything. But I do want you to know that from here on out, Coffee and Crypto will officially be brought to you by none other than Crypto.com. You heard that right. We are now sponsored in part by Crypto.com here on the Coffee and Crypto, Crypto Jeb morning live stream. Like I said, we're going to have the lower third and everything, and you guys will have a link that you can go and sign up. You've probably heard of Crypto.com. The reason I'm so excited about this partnership is because Crypto.com is going to be a great place for you to do your dollar cost averaging with some of the lowest fees in the entire world. You guys have heard of Crypto.com. They've got over 80 million users. They buy stadium rights. They sponsor major league football players and soccer players all around the world. I guess that would also be football, depending on where you live. But as you guys know, Crypto.com is an absolutely awesome product. Uh, as I said, it is an excellent place to begin your journey in cryptocurrency. So make sure that you go to Crypto.com or starting tomorrow after I get the link, you can check the link in the description box down below. Absolutely wonderful website. A lot of people that I know use Crypto.com. I'm going to be using Crypto.com. I'm very, very, very excited for all of the features that they have have definitely very much geared towards people that are newer into the space looking for that user experience looking to be able to dollar cost average and everything so make sure to go to crypto.com or download the app on your phone that was pretty exciting all right let's keep it moving here is everything good there it, nope. all right yep we're good sorry thought there was a issue all right, let's take a look at chat and we will get started here. Joe Bollier is in chat, said good morning, Jeb. Andre S.A. is in chat. Paul Torelli is in chat. Crypto Minibike Blaine O. is in chat. Bradley Jordan said good morning. How was Easter for you? It was fantastic. We went to church and we had an Easter egg hunt and we talked about, um, I taught my son uh, Malachi that uh, because Jesus died, we get to live. So thank you to the Lord for that. So Praise God for Easter and for what it represents. Arslan is in chat. Andrew Johnson's in chat. Laurie, um, Loris Keynes is in chat. Fino, Chewy Cat, Alex Naibo, Romulosi, Nine Skulls is in chat. Said God always provides and this time will not be different. That's right. Marley123, Bills Mafia, Joel Elbs, A1, his boy Elroy, Untouchable. 
All right, Fury Inferno, Martine Siebels, Bear Freedom, Pew Pew Poom 2, Saucy Borg, The Dusty Hunt, SpongeBob SquarePants, Rick, and Rocket Metal News. Everybody else in chat as well. And Pyro Scheme 74. Guys, we got a lot to talk about. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. Bitcoin is currently trading at 69700 and $47. It is up 2.69% over the last seven days, and we have been going through a small correction over the last 24 hours. I am very excited to tell you that this is a good thing. Can I say that again for the people in the back, for the people that didn't hear that, for the people that are concerned about Bitcoin, for the people that are saying, oh my goodness, Bitcoin, <laughs> there's, there's probably only a few of you because most of you know, most of you know better. Um, <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is, I'm not joking. Bitcoin is in great shape, and it going through a correction is one of the best things that could be happening to it right now. I'm going to start off by showing you the chart. I'm not going to pull your leg. I'm not going to make you wait till the end. I'm not going to clickbait you. I'm just going to show you why Bitcoin having a correction right now and the chart that you are seeing in front of you means that we've got a lot of bullishness in the future for Bitcoin. So, fact, previous all-time high on Bitcoin stands right here. On November the 10th, 2021, at 69,000, sorry, $68,936. The bottom of these two parallel red lines of former resistance, now support, represent that exact level. In fact, I'm just going to delete the top one because this red one is the only one we're really concerned about. This is the previous all-time high. Going back to our current chart, you can see that we have come back and back-tested that exact same red level over and over and over again. What does this mean? It means that we have the besieging army of bulls has broken through that trench fortification and is now using it as a resupply depot. Instead of falling beneath that previous all-time high, we continue to fall back to it for reinforcements. That is a hallmark of an advancing army using what used to be enemy territory now as a resupply checkpoint. That is exactly what Bitcoin did this morning. Bitcoin was starting to go up, up, and away and hit some resistance up here. We've been hitting resistance multiple times up here at $71,500. No matter, not worried about it at all. And Bitcoin ever since then has bounced off of $69,000 and we've gone into a small rally. Now, many people are concerned about this drop because they're zoomed in too far and they're looking at the market like this and they're saying, oh my goodness, Time to run around like a headless chicken. Bitcoin dropped 3.5%. Big whoop. I don't care. I don't care a bit. I couldn't care less that my portfolio is down thousands of dollars just because of a tiny little drop. I don't give two cents to Satoshis. And the reason is because this is not where I'm planning on selling. First of all, I'm not planning on selling any Bitcoin at all. But... I'm also not planning on selling alts for a good long while. I've taken a little bit of profit on a couple of them that have more than doubled. But other than that, I'm not really selling much at all for a while. There's a lot more room to go. We've got to zoom out, friends, and look at the perspective. If we turn the chart off here, what we're seeing is that Bitcoin is forming this giant symmetrical triangle pattern out here on the hourly chart if you just zoom out and look at it. Let's see if I can possibly find a clean chart. I'm just going to delete everything on this chart. If we look at this chart right here, we're going to see that there are a few different trend lines that are coming into, into play right now, that are coming into focus right now. Remembering that $69,000 almost exactly is our prior all-time high, so we'll go ahead and set that right there. Bitcoin is currently, as we speak, drawing a gigantic symmetrical triangle pattern that we will then be able to use to break bullish if Bitcoin has a good halving event, which there's no reason to believe that it won't. The price target reaches up towards $100,000. There's a reason that I told you guys that I believe that Bitcoin will be reaching 100 k by the time that my seventh anniversary of being in crypto happens, which will be July 31st, 2024. That is honestly probably going to be quite a bit after we hit $100,000. I actually think that we'll hit 100 k before then. But here's the deal. We just also have to remember that while we're looking at this chart... While we're looking at this chart, we must remember that at some point, Bitcoin is going to cut deep. It's going to be a deep cut. We'll probably hit 100K first. But friends, I think we will moonshot straight to $100,000 right around the halving, which is coming up in just a few weeks. We'll talk about that. Post halving, though, it starts to get... Hmm. Starts to get suspect. What are we going to see happen? I think that Bitcoin could hit $100,000 and then have a major correction before it goes on to finish off the bull market well above $100,000. Similarly to how we had 
a major correction right here in the middle of the prior bull market. That is something that we could absolutely see happen. The point is, Bitcoin is gearing up down here on these shorter term time frames to go through a major rally relatively soon. We just have to make sure that the bottom doesn't fall out. And to be honest with you, every day that we spend up here is the better. Right now, it looks like we're just trading straight vertical. I mean, we're basically just moving straight towards the moon. The longer we trade sideways up here, the more the trend starts to look like this, which is more sustainable. I would love almost nothing more than for Bitcoin to sit here and trade sideways for weeks months even. I don't think that's going to happen though. I think what's happening right now is a lot of people are watching this on coin market cap and they're seeing that there are 19 days approximately until the halving event. 19 days until Bitcoin has a block reward halving. And after that occurs, what happens? Well, we don't really know. Bitcoin's never been in this kind of territory before. The last halving event happened right around here. Bull market happened afterward. The having event before that took place right over here. Bull market obviously took place after that. A lot of people are talking about a forward, uh, forward transition, like a, a backwards transition um, shift on the entire market. That we're now going through the cycles faster because we're going well above all time high uh, before the having event. <clears throat> And so a, a left translated cycle, I think, is what's kind of becoming it's becoming popularly known as the fact of the matter is that very well may be happening. But what is more important is that Bitcoin is going to end up breaking all the way up to one hundred thousand dollars. So how do we prepare for that movement? Let's read a little bit of chat and then we're going to talk about how we can prepare for that movement. Brandon Sandoval in chat. My prediction is the uh, for the king. Um, Two hundred ten thousand dollars by July 4th. That's what he says. We'll see what happens. I'm not sure it's going to happen that quickly, but we'll see. Shadrach Frost said, good morning, folks. He has risen. That's right. John Doe said, <clears throat> John Doe said, Jeb's all in. That's right. I love Bitcoin. Not all of my investments are in Bitcoin, to be very clear, but I do definitely, definitely love Bitcoin. Jennifer Lee by me said, hard to say now that BlackRock has some control in the use of ETFs. Is it too late to buy, Jeb? It is extremely risky to start buying at these, at these levels. At least on Bitcoin. Is it too late to buy? No, I think there is still risk to reward value here. I think whether it's too late to buy or not depends on your situation. If you've got a, let's say you've got a, um, a some debt that has extremely high interest rates. And when you pay off $1 of principal, you're actually saving $3 of interest and you can't just sell the asset. Let's say it's something like credit card debt or student loan debt where there's not a corresponding asset that you can sell to, to cancel out the debt. Then it's actually better to pay that down. Like, for example, if you have a 5% 30-year fixed rate mortgage, then when you put a dollar into the principal in the first five years or so, you're going to be saving $3 of interest. And I'm assuming you're not planning on selling your home to get out of the mortgage, right? So you're guaranteed 3x on that. So whether it's a good time to buy right now or not depends on the other investment opportunities at your disposal. And paying off debt, make no mistake, is a form of an investment, is an investment in your future financial sovereignty. So if you are drowning in debt, especially high interest debt, mathematically speaking, might be a good idea to pay off a lot of that before you start getting too much into Bitcoin because you're so high right now on cryptocurrency. But after you've got a plan to attack the debt, then absolutely, it's still a good time to buy Bitcoin. And the reason I'd say it is a good time to still buy Bitcoin, even though in the short run it might not be, is that with Bitcoin, it has an ETF. You see, BlackRock knows what they are doing and they are in the business of making money. And my friends, they are pretty darn good at it. They are very good at making money, and they understand what happened to GLD, the gold ETF. It rallied 300% in the span of seven short years. If we go over to the GLD ETF here, SPDR Gold ETF Trust, which is now in Blue Sky Breakout all-time high, by the way. It's pretty exciting. Just to, That's good news for Bitcoin because it shows that people are trying to get into risk-on assets that are uh, inflation hedges. After gold launched, the GLD ETF launched, we rallied 315% in the span of uh, seven short years. There is a very strong argument to be made that a very similar thing will happen to Bitcoin and that we will continue to rally. Even if we were to rally only 300% from where we are, which I definitely think we're going to go higher than that, don't get me wrong, then we would be looking at a 300 some thousand dollar Bitcoin. So is there going to be a major rally? Yes, I am very confident that there's going to be a major rally. Could there be a major crash sometime in the next 12 months? Also, yes. If you look at just simply, just Sometimes you got to turn the analysis off for a second and just look at the chart. If you just look at the chart, 
The last 12 months look a whole lot like the beginning of the 2020 bull market, don't they? Don't they? I mean, they do, right? It, it's, it's not a bad thing to admit it. They do. They look very similar. And so when we look at this chart here, we see that they look relatively similar. And so with them looking relatively similar, um, we do have to ask ourselves the question, are we going to see this massive crash? Because just like in 2021, we had a huge amount of retail influx. Right now, we're seeing the exact same thing happen. Are we going to see this massive 50% drop like we saw, 55% drop that we saw uh, here? I don't think that's coming yet, but it definitely could. Bitcoin has rallied very quickly, and frankly, I kind of want it to slow down a little bit. I almost want Bitcoin to spend a few months just locking in these gains. I mean, it doesn't look as ridiculous on the logarithmic chart, but it is still ridiculous to be very crystal clear. So the fact, the fact is, Bitcoin has rallied a lot. It rallied 1,600% in 400 days back here. Bitcoin so far has rallied 375% in as much time. And so I want to see Bitcoin have a correction. If Bitcoin does have a correction, though, that just means that you need to hold longer and you get to buy more. So I'm not terribly worried about Bitcoin going through a massive crash. I'm more so worried about you buying now and then freaking out and selling because a huge correction could come. So let's hope that Bitcoin has some time to cool off and correct, but, uh, and that very well may happen during the halving, but I believe that in the long run, it's still going to be a great idea to buy Bitcoin. Wesley Peterson asks a great question. Why are you not exiting Bitcoin positions near bull market top then buying back lower? I am doing that on all of the altcoins because I believe it is too risky, at least at this point in history, to be holding the altcoins for a long period of time. In 10 years, that'd be different. I'm, in 10 years, what I'm going to recommend is for you to buy probably the top 50 altcoins and hold them as retirement. We're not there yet. Right now, we're still in the early stages of Bitcoin. I see the future on this market, guys. I can see what's going on, what's coming. There is a second stock market being built here. It's not going to be as big as the stock market. It's not going to be a $100 trillion market, but it could be a 10 or $15 trillion market. And it's going to be an excellent investment vehicle for the long run. Right now, the only two that I say fit into that long-term picture are Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum. I'm never going to get a better entry on Bitcoin than the entries I have. It's not going to happen. I don't want to try and buy the bottom, sell the tops. No, then I'm timing the market with my investments. If you're going to trade, trade. But I'm not, I didn't buy that Bitcoin. I don't hold that Bitcoin as a trade. I, had, I, I hold that Bitcoin as an investment. I bought it, some of it down as low as $3,000. Guys, I've been holding some of the Bitcoin I'm in for a very long time. For a very long time. Um, some of the Bitcoin I have, you guys, uh, that I acquired from you guys buying the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy over five years ago, and you paid for it in Bitcoin. And back then, you were paying a tenth of a Bitcoin for it because it was 300 bucks, and Bitcoin was 3,000. So you paid me a tenth of a Bitcoin, and I said, are you sure? And you said, yep, I prefer to work in Bitcoin. I said, all righty, cool beans. 20 or 30 of you guys did that. That's where we acquired a few of our Bitcoin from. We've also acquired Bitcoin from other places, different revenue streams and investment. And I'm not going to get better entries on a lot of that Bitcoin than I already have. So I'm not going to sell it at the top and buy back in the, uh, on the dip because then I am taking extra risk on an already incredibly profitable risk reward ratio. I'm not going to sell and then hope to get a lower entry. I've already got a lower entry. And I know what you're saying. Oh, well, you made 20x. Well, if you sell and then buy back at the bottom, then you could get a 2x just because you bought 50% lower. I could do that. But I'm taking a lot of risk to potentially double the size of the position. That's a lot of risk. I don't want that risk. I want to hold the Bitcoin that I have for decades, man. I'll leave it to my kids, my grandkids, my great-grandkids. I'm going to be holding the Bitcoin that I have for a very long time. So that's not how I look at the altcoins. The altcoins I am doing an investment on, and it's basically a giant swing trade. I'm buying them low, and I'm going to sell them high in the market, but I'm not holding them for the long run. I'm holding them for hopefully 12 months so that I can get long-term capital gains taxes. But even if not, the fact that is the fact is I'm going to be holding them uh, until they get to a top, and I 300, 400, 500%. Um, and uh, that's what I'm going to do from there. I'm going to sell it at the top, and I'm going to hold my Bitcoin and my Ethereum, most of my Ethereum anyway, for the long run, because I believe in it as a long-term project. Think bigger. We are building a new monetary system. That's right. Um, are you suggesting people sell all coins now? Not yet. Let's see. Why are some of the of the other YouTube channels like uh, fill in the blank and fill in the blank? I'm not going to name any names. Have so much more content about memes when they used to call them crap coins and buy sound projects. You would have to ask them. I would, you would have to ask them. Um, 
I'm not the biggest fan of meme coins, although I do think that they are fun. So I do own some, but I almost look at them more as gambling than I do as investment. <laughs> it's Which means I'm going to take profits a lot quicker. It's Android said, Jeb, you're wrong. You think the people in the chat are not thinking for themselves? They aren't thinking of buying something now and saving it for someone else besides themselves. I'm not sure what you mean. I, d I definitely know that a lot of you guys are building wealth for generosity. If you guys remember to the six laws of money and to the only three things that you can do with money, you'll know that generosity is the end goal. The whole point of building wealth is to be generous because here's the thing. All of your wealth will disappear and it will not be yours at some point. You might as well give it willingly and get some joy out of it and help somebody. Well, I mean, it's that simple. I'm all for you building wealth so that you can give it. That is where your greatest source of joy will come from is when you give with a joyful heart, when you give with a willing heart, when you give with a happy heart, a content heart, content with what you have, you will be so happy. That being said, I want you to go build millions. I want you to go build a giant wealth, a, a giant amount of wealth so long as you're going to manage it correctly, which means being financially sovereign over it. Because if you're not financially sovereign over your wealth, I am here to tell you that that wealth has become an idol. There are two options, stewarding your wealth in a financially sovereign way or stewarding your wealth in an idolatrous way. So please be very careful. All right. <clears throat> Let's read a little bit more chat, and then we're going to keep on moving here. Got some great questions in chat. I love interacting with you guys, so let me know. Need that dollar to cool off and rate cuts to be confirmed, and then it'll get wind. Yes, that is another component of what I want to talk about here, guys. Effective federal funds rate still has not dropped. It's still up at five in the third. Um, if we go to the CME Fed Watch, they are not predicting a rate drop for a little while. There's another meeting in 30 days, but I don't think they're predicting even yet a rate drop then. Yes, they're predicting it to be a current, uh, as in for it to not change. They are then predicting for a greater than not likelihood for a rate drop in the June meeting. June will be post having, so we'll be past all of the tribulation and the turbulence of the having. And then with the rate drop coming in, and as we talked about with the Dixie, with the dollar currency index staying low, hopefully, then that is where we'll be able to see a major rally coming into play on Bitcoin. I think that Bitcoin will have a rally before then. Don't get me wrong. But I also think that Bitcoin has to prove itself that it's going to be able to get away from this support. This support at $69,000 is critical. Bitcoin had a rising wedge here. We broke sideways out of it, which is encouraging. We didn't crash below it. We're establishing strong support here at $69,000. I want to see Bitcoin trade sideways here for a while. On this chart, it looks like we've got a lot of market structure built here. On this chart, you can barely even see the sideways action. I want more. I honestly would love to see Bitcoin trade sideways for a month, for two months. I would love for Bitcoin to trade sideways through the end of May. It's probably not going to happen. But if it did, it would really help to establish these levels. I want to see a lot of VRVP being built up here. We don't have a lot. You can see that we're up here and the support is light years away. The next major strong sound level of support on visible range volume profile, which just takes into account all of the previous trading activity on Bitcoin and its volume thereof. The next level is $57,000. That's $12,000 lower than where we are. I would love to build a bunch of VRVP support up here around 70K and then use that as a jumping off point so that when we fall back down towards $70,000, we don't just crash straight through it and drop back down to 57, but we might actually be able to hold at 57. Friends, this is a dangerous looking chart to invest in. We've already gone through such a massive rally. And so I'm getting to the point where I'm really like, ah, I'm not so sure you should be putting a ton more in unless you're planning on holding it for the long term in this chart. Now let's look at something like, you know, V chain, then I'm not as worried about it, right? V chain, you're way down here. Market is barely even taken off yet. I'm not anywhere near as worried about you investing in something like this. If you're buying Bitcoin at this point, I want you to have a long term perspective and you're okay with having to hold it for years to see a return. If you're buying Cardano, you're way down here. There's way more upside potential than downside potential. Even something like, you know, Avalanche, you're still pretty far away from all time high. If you're looking at buying Solana, you need to be careful also because Solana is actually already beyond bull market all-time high. I'll tell you right now, I'm not buying any more Solana. I've got my Solana position. I'm not going to get any more down at 80 bucks like I was. That's just not going to happen. It's too late. All right? So at some point, you've got to realize some of these assets are moving out of good, sound, risk-to-reward ratio territory. I'm going to say it again. 
It's about the risk to reward ratio. If you have a 30-year fixed rate mortgage and you're not planning on selling the house to liquidate the asset to cover the debt and you've got a 5% interest rate and you put, and this is not sexy. This is not attractive. This is not cool. This is not flashy. This is not the secret millionaire sauce that everybody's trying to sell you. This is just common freaking sense and an amortization calculator. All right. If you put a dollar into the principal extra, not just the regular monthly payment, but extra principal into your mortgage and you got a 5% interest rate on a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, which a lot of you guys have homes like that. If you put a dollar into the principal, you will save $3 on the interest. Run the numbers. Whatever your interest rate in it is, even if it's two and a quarter, two and an eighth, you're still going to probably save 75%, 75 cents on the dollar of interest. You know what that is? That is a reward, assuming you're not planning on selling the home, with zero risk, which means that is actually what we call an infinite risk to reward ratio. There is zero risk because you're paying off debt. So it is a zero risk game. Zero risk. You pay the principal, you don't pay the interest. Guaranteed, if they don't do that, then that's what's called criminal, and then you go to what's called the court, and you bring that before what's called the judge, and you say, judge, this banker is acting like a banker. No, I'm just kidding. This banker broke the law, beat him up or something. You know, go, go get him, sick him, tiger. And you know what they do? They say, oh, I'm so sorry, here's your money back. That's called a guaranteed risk-reward ratio. So you need to kind of analyze, what is your debt structure? What what are some debts that you can pay off with basically let's say you own a vehicle and you can't sell it because you need it. It's got debt on. It's got a giant debt on, debt payment on. Let's say you've got your one car family and you have to have this car and it's got an $18,000 more uh sorry, uh, auto loan on it and it's at like 14% or something just absolute highway robbery. And it's a long term pay, it's like a 72 month thing. You're probably going to be saving 75 cents, a dollar, dollar 50, 2 dollars on the dollar whenever you pay off the interest on that, assuming you're not planning on selling the asset. So that's a guaranteed risk reward ratio. So you got to go through all of your debts and realize, wait a minute, even before I invest in cryptocurrency, there are some better investments here where I can instantly double or triple my money just by paying off debt because I'm not going to pay the interest on it. After you've realized what the best risk reward ratio investments are that you have access to, then that is where you come into crypto and you start looking at the cryptos through the same lens. Bitcoin could probably realistically two to three X from here in this bull market. What's the risk? The risk is it could drop 50% at any flipping time. And the risk is I might have my money locked up in it for three to five years waiting for that to occur because who knows what can happen. That's a greater risk reward ratio than a 3x with zero risk. Give me a one in chat if you're understanding what I'm saying. I really hope that you guys get what I'm saying here. Now, after you've done all of that analysis on your personal financial picture, then what you do is you start going down the altcoins and saying, realistically, I think this could 10x. Like when I look at VeChain, one of the reasons I'm still investing in VeChain, when I look at VeChain and everything that the project is doing, I can say, I realistically believe that this could 10x in the coming bull market. I literally could see this going to $30 billion. Let's talk about ICP. Met somebody the other day named Peter. He was talking about ICP, one of his biggest holdings. I could realistically see ICP like 5Xing from here, at least. Probably more, to be honest with you. ICP is absolutely nuts. Absolutely incredible project. I could realistically see it going to $100 or more. I could realistically see it going to $50 billion or more. There is an insane amount of development going on on ICP. What's the risk? The risk is it goes to zero. What's the risk of that? Relatively low because we're in a giant flipping bull market. So you go through the investments opportunities that you have before you and you start thinking about, hmm, what's the risk to reward ratio here? How am I, uh, how are the, how is the reward stacking up against the risk? If you only calculate the risk, then you are a foolish optimist. Being optimistic is not foolish, but you can be a foolish optimist. If you only calculate the risk, you're a foolish optimist. Sorry, if you only calculate the reward, you're a foolish optimist, and you think you live in a world of sunshine and rainbows where your investments never turn upside down. Well, my friend, welcome to investment, because you must be new here. That's not the way it works. You must calculate the reward, the risk, I'm sorry, or you will get absolutely devastated. If you only calculate the risk, then you're a pessimist, and you're going to stick your money under a mattress and let it inflate away into the ether and it'd be worth nothing over the course of the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. If you only save and don't invest because you don't calculate the reward and you're only looking at the, oh my gosh, you've got an Eeyore spirit, right? You're, you're like, oh, I'm just depressed. I, I, I put my money in the market. It's just, just going to go down. I'm not going to do anything. Then what's going to happen 
is you're never going to invest and you're never going to make money. And you're never going to pay off debt. You might pay off, excuse me, you're never going to invest, but you might pay off debt because there's zero risk there. If you only calculate the risk, then you're a pessimist and a fool. If you only calculate the reward, you're an optimist and a fool, but you're still a fool. So stop being a fool. Get wise because it is the principal thing. and Make some money. Calculate the risk to reward ratio in your head, and it's not always going to be an exact number. In fact, it normally isn't because you normally can't calculate the risk unless it is an actual... <clears throat> You can sometimes based on the beta, um, but it's not always that easy to factor in all of the risk factors. You have to just consider it in your mind. Um, the fact of the matter is you have to calculate the risk to reward ratio and look for the investments with the best one and consistently time and time again, over and over and over again, get it right. I would rather you invest in something that has zero risk and will bring you 10% a year than something that has almost any risk and bring you 100% a year. Because if you do that over and over and over again, that's how you, you guys, I have met many people that are worth hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. And the way they do it is they make investments in things that are boring. They make investments in crypto, sure. But the way they made their wealth is they made their investment in something boring. Oh, we're an exchange. Oh, you can trade things. Oh, we buy farmland. Oh, we just buy Bitcoin because the, it's the lowest risk. Oh, we just do this. And then you're saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, but they got a huge income. Well, the reason they got a huge income is because they did something boring on the income front. They did the same thing every single day, day in and day out for, I don't know, about 30 or 40 years. And now they're rich as can be. And the reason they did that is because they were wise about risk. It's okay to take risk, but it was calculated when they did it. It's very rare that, sometime, that someone takes a giant risk for very little reward and they get wealthy doing that. It's not common. What's common is people take low risk, good reward investments, and they dump money into that for years. Call it your IRA and 401k. Call it Bitcoin. Call it farmland. Call it cash flowing real estate with no debt on it. Whatever you want to call it, that's how 99% of the people that I've run into that are worth millions and millions and millions of dollars got there. That's how they did it. They kept it simple. And they poured money into what they knew worked. They were not changing the schedule every single week. They were not sabotaging themselves by changing their strategy every single month. No. They did the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> Wealth, wealthy investors take less risks. Busket, Buffett and those guys are 90% guarantee ROI investments. What they do is they stop relying on their investments to carry them. They start building companies or picking up side hustles or increasing their skill set so that they have more money to dump into the investment. They're okay with 10x over 30 years. They're all right with that because they can almost guarantee that it's going to happen. They dump their money and they say, I can, I can, I can bet on that. That is almost certainly going to. That's why people invest in the stock market, as they should. That's why people are betting on Bitcoin now, as they should. We are at a point now where it's almost impossible to say buying Bitcoin is a dumb idea. If you hold it for ten years, it's going to be worth more than it is now, almost certainly. It's a little bit like buying gold. If you hold it for long enough, it's going to be worth more than it is. There's a degree of a guarantee. It's not guaranteed, but it, it, it's a degree of certainty there. Confidence is the word. Wise investors calculate their risk to reward. Fools only look at one side of the equation. Wealthy investors look at the risk and reward. Fools only look at one side of the equation. People say they hold Bitcoin for long term, but what happens if Satoshi comes out of nowhere and dumps his huge Bitcoin bags? Then it's a little bit like throwing a giant log in a still pond. Doesn't mean the pond's always going to be wavy. Just means it's got to take a little bit of time to settle back down. Satoshi dumping his bags, which I don't think is going to happen, but it could. It could. If he does, or she, or they, or whatever, whoever it is, it will, um, you know, it'll make things turbulent for a season, but not for very long. No more than a year, I'd say. All right. All right, let's see. Interesting. Could you share how you plan to leave Bitcoin for the kids? How would you legally make sure they will receive it? I'm interested in doing that too. Well, I would probably 
um, de- when you get close to dying and you're trying to plan your estate, you uh, designate, designate the most trusted, a lot of times it's the oldest, but it really should be the most trusted of your children, or your spouse, if you're the first one that you know is going to go, or your spouse is something called the executor of the estate. Um, you can also pronounce it the executor of the estate. Uh, many people call it the, ex- the executor of the estate, however you want to pronounce it. Those are the people that execute the estate plan. It's pretty straightforward. That individual is who you would train to do this, and there are there are ways that you can set up legal documentation giving them this legal um, <clears throat> ability and authority to do these things. And um, this is where you pick somebody that you trust. Again, ideally, it's your spouse. If your spouse isn't there, then you can have it be an attorney, or you can have it be a child that you trust who is an adult. So you'll need a will. Um, and John Doe just said it legally. You'll need you'll dra- uh, you need a will drafted with an estate attorney. So exactly, you'll have to go through an attorney. You'll have to designate an executor of the estate who can be an attorney or one of your children or your spouse. Um, ideally, it'd be one of those three individuals. I wouldn't have it be anybody else, like a like a brother or a sister. I would keep it in, as uh, one of those three. And again, if we're talking about a child, I'm not talking about a twelve year old. I'm talking about a thirty five or a forty year old who's got some life experience. Um, But at that point, then it's just the same way that you would do with anything else. You just give them uh, very clear, very precise instructions that are for their eyes only on how to um, how to distribute everything. And then you, my friend, need to leave a very clear will, because one of the best ways to destroy a family is to make a buttload of money, not train your children and your spouse to be selfless and sacrificial and forget or just not leave a very detailed written will. Because I tell you what, if you don't train your family, men that are watching, and the women that are watching too, but especially I'm speaking to the men that are watching, if you don't train your family to be selfless, to be submissive to authorities, like the will is an authority, it is on your authority of what you have, then it will cause infighting and the destruction of the family. So please make sure your wills are very, very, very clearly laid out for anything over such and such amount of money. Let's say you've got a, I don't know, you got a toothbrush. That doesn't need to be in the will. But everything over, I don't know, 0.1% of your net worth. Let's say you're a millionaire. Everything everything worth over $1,000 is laid out exactly what's going to happen to it in written detail. And uh, you need to have an attorney involved if you're worth any amount of money. It's called a living will. You can write it before you die, even before you think you're going to die. It's a very morbid thing to think about, but it doesn't have to be if we know the Lord Jesus, because we know whatever we leave behind, man, we're finding something better. All right, let's read some chat, and then we're going to wrap it out here, guys. Point of the entire stream is this. In a nutshell, what I want to share with you is Bitcoin is about to go through a major rally, I do believe. Um, and it is a great time to be loading up if you're planning on holding for the long run and you paid off all of your consumer that is non-mortgage debt. If you have done that, then it is a wonderful time, in my humble opinion, to be loading up on Bitcoin and multiple other altcoins. But you need to make absolutely sure that you're calculating the risk-to-reward ratio and that you are investing only in things that you understand. If you don't understand crypto, then you've got two options. Either learn about crypto, which I can help you with, or don't buy crypto. But never buy something you don't understand because then you're gambling. If you want to gamble, fine. If you want to go spend 20 bucks at the craps table, if you want to go put 100 bucks into blackjack and you've got that kind of money to flush down the toilet, light on fire, tie it to the talent of an eagle and watch it fly away, then good for you. But don't call it an investment. Call it fun. Right? When my son turned two, we tied his pacifier to a balloon and let it go. And we have, we have a video of this. And the, the balloon's floating away with his pacifier and saying, Bye! Bye, Passy! And about two minutes later, he's freaking out because he's never getting it again. So if you are not understanding the thing that you're investing in, then just buy Pacifier. That, that's you, right? That That's your money tied to the balloon, floating away. Buy money! That's you. So don't be like that because you're supposed to keep your money. Eventually, you got to get off Pacifier, right? But don't, don't wave goodbye as your money floats away. Have a plan and only invest in things that you understand and be a wise individual. Remember, fools are just hopeful or just pessimistic. Wise people calculate the risk-to-reward ratio and look at both. We definitely had a destruction in our family because the will, so sad, no more family gatherings. That is so sad. 
That is so sad. <laughs> People like the pacifier story. That's a true story. I'm not even kidding. We got pictures of it. <laughs> it wasn't his second birthday. It was the day after his second birthday, actually. Yeah. No, he thinks it's funny now. He was he was so sad. He was so upset. No, but hey, I mean, ultimately, kid didn't want to give up his pacifier. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> Oh my goodness. We're on the brink of one of the biggest moves in Bitcoin history. I agree. <laughs> oh my goodness. You need a signature for siblings left out of the will, or the estate attorney will try and verify left out of the will to try and get a void contested will. Yep. <clears throat> Who holds the keys to your wealth, the attorney or your wife? God holds the keys to your wealth. <laughs> as far as who holds the keys to your wealth, you have to designate that based on your own wisdom. Is your, do you, you know, ultimately, I believe it should most certainly be your wife because ultimately you two became one when you got married. There's no longer two. There's now one. Um, But I mean, it, it depends if it's a, if there's like abuse going on and you know, there's an estrangement that generally speaking, I think it should be your spouse, but I'm I'm saying that if you have a good marriage or at least a decent marriage you can always create an llc and transfer all the assets to it and then leave the llc to your all your heirs or create a grant guarantor grantor trust and pick two trustworthy trustees and place everything you own in trust yep good job no pacifier <laughs> both options remove your estate from probate and you limit your exposure to future liabilities judgment proof interesting that's a good idea i've never heard of that before <laughs> two enterprises said we love you jeb god bless you brother Jeb's son now hates balloons. No, he's still the biggest fan ever of balloons. That kid loves balloons. No, he remembered that for like a day, and then he thinks it's funny now. We show him the videos, and he thinks it's hilarious because he's three and a half. Guys, we are about to wrap it out. Before we do, I do want to let you know that today's stream is brought to you in part by NordVPN. If you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Jeb and you sign up using our link, then you will be getting a big discount when you sign up for a two-year plan. So make sure you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Jeb and sign up because it is going to help protect you while you browse online. NordVPN gives you the ability to change the routing of your internet activity straight to their servers, which means you are essentially invisible while you browse online, making it significantly more difficult to be targeted by hackers, scammers, and thieves. So if you sign up for NordVPN.com, then you will be getting access to architecture and software that will be protecting you as you browse online from hackers and thieves that are trying to steal your assets. If you've got a big cryptocurrency portfolio or even just any kind of cryptocurrency portfolio at all, or if you want to protect your bank accounts and your logins and all of the different things that you do online, NordVPN is going to help to protect you while also keeping you private so that people can't see what you're doing and tell you what to do and try and authoritate where you go online. NordVPN is an excellent, excellent, excellent component of our crypto jab tool basket so make sure to sign up with the link in the description box down below if you've not already all right you have to trust your trustee yes exactly good strategy to break your relationship with a pacifier hey sometimes cold turkey is the best way to go sucks for a couple days but you can just kind of sit there and be sad and then and then you're all done <laughs> All right, guys, we're at, we're at time. We got to go. I enjoy. I am so glad that all of you have tuned in. Also, make sure to check out Blowfin. Links in the description box down below for that. Great exchange. And also, shout out to Crypto.com for sponsoring the channel. Very excited to see where all of you guys are going to go. Like I said, we are out of time, so I'm going to wrap it out. Before I go, I do just want to let each and every single last one of you know that all success begins with a personal and daily walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I said, before I go, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.